Hi folks, I'm Joe, and welcome to the first episode of Same Name, Different Game, Gaiden. A new show where I take a look at different versions of games that aren't expansive enough to merit a full SNDG episode. These differences could be things as small as the art associated with the game, or larger things like different emulations of the same arcade game and how they differ. And that is the subject of today's installment. Double Dragon 2 was the subject of numerous ports and versions, several on consoles and computers, but they differ pretty significantly from the original arcade version, and if you want to see me talk about those, I have done so in past videos, including my most recent full-blown episode of Same Name Different Game, looking at the arcade, Genesis, uh, and Xbox 360 versions. But today, I'll be talking about the best way to play the original arcade game out of the currently available official options. There are, essentially, two current ways to play the arcade version of Double Dragon via licensed channels. The Arcade Archives version from Hamster, available on both PS4 and Switch, or the version that's part of .emu's Double Dragon Trilogy, available on PC, iOS, and Android. First, I suppose I should address the differences between the PS4 and Switch versions. There is only one. The Switch version allows you to choose the Japanese version of the ROM, though for my part I wasn't able to spot any differences between the US and Japanese versions anyways. This Arcade Archives version is very accurate to the arcade, including all the slowdown of the original board. It includes the option to soften the visuals, add scan lines, and change the aspect ratio with very fine tuning. It adds a caravan and high score mode. The former is based on a popular series of Japanese game competitions in which a player gets 5 minutes to rack up the highest score possible, and the latter is to see the best score possible in one full credit. There are leaderboards for both. The .emu version is less accurate to the arcade. I mean, it's very clearly an emulation of the arcade, but it's been messed with. The first thing you'll notice is the status bar has been modernized, for lack of a better term, and it frankly looks hideous, to me at least. I mean, it looks like a mobile game, which I guess technically this is, but the PC version at least should have the option to change it to arcade style, and it doesn't. It also runs too fast, which I presume was an effort to remove the slowdown found in the arcade original, but... I'm a stickler for accuracy, warts and all. This one also includes visual filters, but not the option to resize the screen in the same way. You can only affect the resolution the entire collection outputs at. It also only has two options for scan lines, 50% or 100%, while the Arcade Archives has a 0 through 10 setting. This version does include a remixed soundtrack, but I don't think it's that good. Your mileage may vary. The weird thing about it, though, is that the end stage theme just isn't remixed, and the stage transition theme doesn't play at all when this option is on, so there's no music when going between levels. The .emu version also includes a control option that some of you may welcome. Now I've said before that I actually like the arcade controls, which the Arcade Archives version keeps intact, but this one has an easy control option that's defaulted to on, meaning that there are dedicated punch and kick buttons. The problem I have here is that punch still always goes in front of you and kick always behind you, so it becomes more confusing in my view. It also doesn't affect weapons, so if you're holding an item, kick always goes left and punch always goes right with that weapon. Finally, this one includes options for arcade or story mode. On arcade mode, the game plays as though it normally would, however, unlike the arcade original, you are limited to but three continues. This is somewhat addressed with the story mode, where you now have more lives and can choose any stage you've reached previously in either arcade or story mode. However, in this mode, you cannot continue at all, so I hope 6 lives is enough to make it through Mission 4. Ultimately, the Arcade Archives version is the better option in my estimation. 
It runs at the correct speed, it doesn't have a hideous modernized HUD that clashes with the game, and the bonuses of Caravan and High Score modes are more interesting to me than a just okay remixed soundtrack and the option to <clears throat> fix the controls. Still, the .emu version is hardly terrible, and it's regularly available for just a couple bucks during Steam sales, which isn't bad for the whole trilogy, even if Double Dragon 3 is a garbage heap. But that's a story for another day. Thanks for watching this inaugural episode of SNDG Gaiden, and we'll see you next time. Hey folks, I hate to ask, but please like, comment, ring the bell, do all that stuff because it really does help the channel. This video was 100% funded by viewers like you on Patreon, where just a buck per video can get you early access to new videos, a monthly patron-only stream, and your name listed here among all these other lovely people. If you want more Double Dragon stuff from me, the video on the left is about Super Double Dragon, and the one on the right is my recent look at Double Dragon 2 in the arcade and on the Sega Genesis.